Hello again. This will be a quick follow-up video on the Hayoki DT4252. If you watched my previous two videos on this meter, I had installed a small insert. You could see it here at the end of the screwdriver. And that was done to prevent the meter from breaking down between the input connector here and the fuse. So what we saw happen was it broke down from the input jack to this side of the fuse holder ran over to this trace here and instead of breaking down across this junction here it actually broke down to this tip and I don't know if you can see that hopefully the camera can maybe pick that up there's a slight discoloration in the circuit board here where the heat was generated but it actually arced right to the tip here of the fuse holder there's a little bit of copper now exposed and then it would have gone up through the shunt and then back down to ground so had I had the fuse installed the arc would have traveled straight across through the fuse through the shunt and then back to ground but because the fuse wasn't installed we actually saw two breakdown points so one of the things I've been asked is if I run the meter again at the high voltage with this insert installed as does the meter break down I thought I'd trace out some more of this meter see I got the Bryman out and it's in continuity mode from the input pin which is you know basically across this gas discharge tube that connects over to this small trace right here so you can follow that up it goes to here and then it goes into the selector switch and then depending on what mode it's in, so if it's in diode mode we can see it goes over to this TVS right here and if it's in like resistance mode for example we'll see it goes to this TVS so I believe all three of these TVS's are the downstream protection I looked up the TVS's that the Hayoki is using you can tell by the logo on the part these were manufactured by Little Fuse. The response time is typically less than one picoseconds from zero volts to the breakdown voltage. The particular parts they use are marked BZ, which appear to be an SMA J24A. The BZ we can notice is a unidirectional device. These have a maximum breakdown voltage of 29.5 volts and a maximum clamping voltage of 38.9 volts but getting back to this trace over here if we look right next to that you can see these four vias in this small inductor and these basically go back to this side of the current sense which unfortunately is ground so if we see between the common so this is all attached here and we can see how close this area is I think what's going to happen is if I discharge this again at the higher voltage with this insert there's a good possibility now it would break down between here and here so let's just go ahead and give that a try and we'll see what happens the transient generator itself is currently strapped for the 14,000 volts just the way I ran it in the last test and then I think what I'm going to do is just attach the leads right directly to the meter. And we won't be using the oscilloscope. I know the output of the generator is going to be at 14,000. Unfortunately, this generator cannot drive the camera, so I have to do that manually. Alright, so let's have a look here. Okay, let's try it a second time. As I suspected, the meter broke down in this area. It actually broke down on the back side of the board. The same trace you can see coming over here. And then it goes right up next to, again, the vias. So what I did is I cleaned that area up the best I could. 
and then I covered that area with Corona dope and I have not done it yet to the front side but I'm gonna go ahead and do that looking at the board under a microscope I don't see any signs of it actually arcing across on this side just gonna use a little bit of circuit board cleaner on a q-tip and we'll scrub this area up again we just want to make sure that there's no contaminants on the circuit board before we apply our dope and again we don't have to apply a whole lot uh, just enough to cover up that area should be sufficient And we'll go ahead and let that dry. One of the things I forgot to mention is I had gone ahead and functionally tested this meter after I ran the previous tests, and no problems at all. I didn't expect there would be. Uh, these TVSs are actually going to switch very fast. So I've given the dope some time to dry. I've reassembled the board into the case, and it's connected back up to the transient generator. So what I'm going to do is we'll apply another pulse. We'll capture this with both cameras again. Okay, here we go. This will be uh, again about 14,000 volts, single transient. So the generator is actually firing. I don't know if you can hear it. And basically, there are no signs of any breakdown. Let me just turn off the lights now. right there it cycled and there it cycled and it looks pretty good I've gone ahead and reassembled the Hioki just do a quick check on it make sure it's still functional so again this will be the continuity test seems fine say 0.5 ohm 1 ohm 50 ohm 100 ohm 1K, 10K, 100K, 1 meg, and 10 meg. This will be a 0.1 microfarad and a 1 microfarad. And a 10 microfarad. And a short. Of course, in diode check. And a single diode. Two diodes. And three diodes in series. This will be 10 volts DC off of our fluke reference. This is 1 volt off of the fluke. And 1 millivolt. Here we have roughly 5 volts AC applied. I have not tested this meter in current mode. Let's just give it a try. 
Should be roughly 60 milliamps. And this should be roughly 0.6 amps. This is roughly 5 amps applied. Okay, so the meter tests out just fine. Other right, than the little bit of damage done to the circuit board, there really hasn't been any damage to the meter. So I hope this video helped answer some of your questions. And until the next meter, later.